All right, so we got the brand new specialized uh, Tarmac SL8 and the specialized S-Works Tarmac SL8. I was able to check out the new specialized Tarmac Expert, um, the $6,500 uh, US model. And um, I didn't ride it yet, but it looked pretty cool. And I really want to make a point on this channel to um, talk about these bikes in a way that people have not talked about them before. I notice people love specs and stuff, but I don't want to talk about specs as much on this channel. I'll talk about a few of them, like the 16.6 second thing. I don't really think that matters for most of us. And, and the reason for that is, you know, that's like, they don't specify what speed it is. So that's kind of wrong on Specialized's part. But I think what matters most is how this bike is going to make us feel. Like, how is this bike going to make us feel on a ride compared to, you know, like a BMC or a Trek or a Pinarello, you know, just against any of those other bicycles. So I want to talk about also, um, I didn't put this video out right after the release because I wanted to hear about what some other people had to say about it first. And what they had to say about it was some varying opinions of course you got the typical people that you know are sent products and they're like you know this bike is the best and then you got people who only like the old stuff and they're gonna be like this bike is the worst thing i've ever seen it's terrible it's not rim brake and you know i i, I totally understand both sides of this argument i get it you know some people want rim brakes some people want the old stuff and then some people like the new stuff or they're very dishonest and they'll just say whatever they can to get sent more free stuff, which I, to I totally get. But the SL7, just coming from it as a consumer, somebody who doesn't really have a strong feeling about it, when it came out, I thought it looked cool. But just when I looked a little bit more into it, the SL7 just seemed kind of janky because it seemed to me like Specialized, they had this whole group of people that really liked the Venge, and they're like, all right, we're not doing the Venge anymore, we're gonna combine the Venge and the Tarmac to make the Tarmac, <laughs> which, is, which is cool. And I knew a lot of people that liked the Venge, and I knew a lot of people that liked the Venge, maybe thought it rode very harshly. I never actually got to get out in a Venge, but I can go based off of what people have said. Now, the new tarmac just as a perception of it like my impression my opinion of it it seems like a lot more of a legit bicycle and i'm gonna tell you why now you know i'm not like a physicist or whatever you have all these people that explain you know why these claims may or may not be true so you've got the athos technology of that carbon layup they do they connect the carbon in a certain way and they took a ton of weight out of the frame which i i think is really amazing like if that's true and they were actually able to take like over 100 grams out of that frame that's like really good because everything's disc brakes now because everybody wants integration nobody wants to see the cables or the hoses or anything like that so they're really trying to get the weight of the frames down because a lot of the group set manufacturers aren't super great about getting the weight down on their group sets. They're more focused on functionality, which is which is important too, in, in reducing wear and kind of making it cheaper to own group sets and not having to replace chains as often. Like that's really, really good. But the frame manufacturers, like everybody's doing their part to make these bikes as lightweight as possible. Again, because everybody's focused on aerodynamics. And one thing, somebody said at one point was which it's it makes me look at and i don't just want to pick on specialized i want to look at any brand that says aero is everything and weight doesn't matter and then promoting how much lighter this bike is it makes them seem kind of like i don't know like a cop out from before do you know what i mean 
it makes them seem like a cop out from before, from whatever the previous model was. So that makes me raise an eyebrow. I'm not gonna cry about it too much. I, I understand how you need to market things and how that works. But just if you do a little bit of digging, like that makes you look at it like, hmm. Huh. But nevertheless, it's still a really impressive thing to have a lighter by a skull that is claimed to be as fast as a Venge. Like you don't need a Venge when, you know, a lot of companies like Trek make some, <laughs> they make three bikes, you know, the Evan Almonda and a Madone. And I think the Madone in the wind tunnel is faster than the Monda off of what I've seen, what I've researched. But the Madone, I've seen a few of these photos and um, if, if I got hit downstate in that area, I don't think I'd be too comfortable, you know, with that raw carbon. So that, that looks a little bit painful. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, basically we can have one bike that does all this, which is really cool. So if you're a climber or you're a sprinter, everybody can have the same bike, which saves the manufacturers a lot of money. I mean, makes our choices consumers very easy. It, it does both of those things. It benefits everybody, which is actually a good thing because, you know, bicycles are awesome. We want these companies to stay around. Um, we want them to make good bicycles and have the resources to make bikes that aren't junk, if they are junk, if they're really good, make bikes that are like even better next year. You know, if your bike is so good, you know, no one's ever gonna upgrade if it's like the same thing next year. That's why nobody buys a new iPhone every anymore because you have an iPhone that just got really good. You're like, what's the point of upgrading? It's not even that much faster. It doesn't feel much faster. So those are both sides of it. But I never did get to get out in an Athos. I will get out in an Athos at some point, And I wanna tell you guys about it because like that is the bicycle that I've wanted to get out on the most. I just don't know anybody that owns one and I haven't bothered to purchase one yet. Um, but let me know in the comments below if you would like me to get an Athos because I actually might want to do it. Um, I wanted to wait and see how it is, see how the durability is. And I haven't heard a whole lot of horror stories with that carbon technology of weaving everything up in that way. Now, tarmac, you know, some of the videos and the races I've seen, like in some of the the, the world tour races, or the tour, I forget exactly what ra race it was, but you've seen the frame snap in half because the frames are very lightweight. Now, I get that. I get they're a little bit, you know, weaker than the other carbon frames. Basically because you've just got less material. You know, you're focused on making the bicycle as lightweight. But the thing is, people were saying that like six years ago. They're like, oh yeah, don't crash this bicycle. Like, like my Amanda SLR. Don't crash that because it's a wet noodle and it'll snap in half. Like, if I crashed my Amanda SLR into that shed right there, going fast enough, the thing would snap in half. It, it would. It's carbon fiber. It's, it's a fragile material unless it's meant to be built up more. That's where you have, like, carbon that's on a gravel bike or on, like, a mountain bike. Like, it's, it's constructed differently than it is for a road bike. Road bike carbon is designed to be comfortable. It's designed to be lightweight or it's designed to be aero. It, and that's one of the reasons people really like it is because you can do all those things with it. But you know, no matter what, it's gonna snap. I mean, if you crash it, dude, if, if, if I go buy like an AMG Mercedes and I crash it, you know, the car is gonna be not looking too hot. That's the thing. So with all those things in mind, I like the way the bike looks. I think it looks really good. I I mentioned in the, the last video I did on that SL7 S-Works Tarmac is that I found the design boring 
because everybody seemed to be copying this BMC design of the drop seat stays and the integrated stuff and it just looks the same. But this bike doesn't. Looking at this bike in person, that seat post is gorgeous. People are like, oh, it's a proprietary. No, no, I know it's proprietary. Stuff's proprietary now. It's how people differentiate themselves. Like getting that out of the way, the seat post looks beautiful. Like if you can see this bike in person, it's, it's a really, really gorgeous design. I like that it has the BSA bottom bracket. That was actually something I really liked about the, um, the SL7 because I love my Amanda SLR. The one thing I just don't like about it, if I could change one thing, you know, and get the same functionality, I don't like that press fit bottom bracket. I think they're more of a pain in the butt. You don't need to press and to find the right size press. Like you can just twist it in, which is a lot easier. So definitely a fan of that toward the front the arrow nose thing i forget exactly what they were calling it i don't have a strong opinion on it i don't it's not like the highlight of the design for me i do like chunky tubes on a carbon bike i think that looks really attractive but toward the back that's really kind of where my attention's going with that seat post it's a bit narrower it's just really really pretty looking so overall design of this bike, I really do like. It's a great looking road bike. It doesn't look too much like an aero bike to the point where I'm like, oh my gosh, this looks like kind of a glorified tri bike. It looks boring. It looks like something I'm never gonna wanna ride because of how uncomfortable it looks to ride. I'm not getting that vibe here. I'm getting the vibe of this is a really beautiful design. And, you know, people will definitely argue about you know, it doesn't matter how the bike looks or whatever. I think it does matter how the bike looks because that inspires you to ride it or not. But for a modern bike, like a lot of people just complain that it's disc brake. Like, don't talk about that in this video. Like, that's another video. Like, yes, like rim brake, you know, feels better handling wise because you can shape the fork however you want. You can focus more on that because you're not putting a load through there. Put your brake caliper and stop the bike. Like that's true, but we're comparing apples for apples. We're comparing like modern disc brake road bikes. Like where does this bike fall? I think that this is gonna be the bike that if you didn't like the SL7, I think you'll like this one more. Um, I think design wise in that white color, the S works with the Durace, like that's so pretty. It's like black and white. It's just so good. You've got to go to a bike shop, check out this bike. It's really pretty looking. I want to know what all of you think of this bike. Specialized charging us too much money. Is $14,000 a lot of money for a road bike? I think so. It's a little bit out of my price range, but I think if you have the money, do you buy this or do you buy an Athos? I'd still buy an Athos just because I want the lightest bike I can get. And I think the Athos I like that design a bit better, but I think if you're into that modern bike look and you've had a Venge maybe for a few years and you never got the SL7, you're a skeptical and you want to upgrade, I think that this could be a really good option for you. I think you'd like it and I'll be interested to get on it and to see how comfortable it is to ride. So yeah, let me know what you guys all think. You're amazing. And um, peace.